Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you'll know a couple of years ago I made a video where I 3D, I designed and 3D printed taillight housings and lenses. Oh, and the front parking light housings and lenses as well for my old Jeep CJ7. Now, specifically in the case of the taillight housings and lenses, those taillights, they're just not used on Jeep CJs and YJs. They were used on utility trailers and heavy-duty trucks and flatbeds. Those box taillights and lenses were used on a lot of things. I see them on backs of campers and all kinds of stuff. So this might be relevant to your interest whether you um, own a Jeep or not. Now, the black ABS housings are holding up really well. Everybody told me they wouldn't. Of course, the black, you're not going to see a color change in the, in the sun here. But the housings have been holding up really well. And the front parking light housings, they're behind the sheet metal. So they're completely, completely shielded from the sun, heat and the UV, not the heat, but the direct sunlight and UV here. And also, you may remember here a year ago, I did an outdoor heat and UV test across a bunch of different filaments. And um, as you can see by so you can see by looking here, my original ABS lenses, which I really liked. I really liked the color and the translucency of this transparent ABS. Unfortunately, a month out in the Arizona sun did this to them. And um, <laughs> you know what? On the front, I probably wouldn't even need amber lenses. <laughs> but you know what? I, I don't like the way they look like that. That's not a color that I think is particularly appealing. So I tried some other things. Here's one I made in the back out of transparent PETG. Now, PETG did change color slightly in my um, outdoor UV test. But it's more like it lost its shininess and kind of became slightly more opaque. I originally made these with no infill and only four layers thick. And as you can see, they're, um, they cracked and broke. They're not really strong enough. And I didn't particularly care for their appearance. Now, this one here I made out of ASA. And ASA I found to be a somewhat difficult filament to print with. It not only warped, it um, had some strange artifacting in it. Plus, it just wasn't opaque enough. And this, even, even this thin, and you can see it cracked. I don't know if you can see that. It cracked in there. That's just too thin. So I kind of went back to the drawing board. And I'll put links to my, my Jeep CJ7 series so that you can see the... Um, you can dig through there and look for the... Um, all the different taillight lenses and license plate light things I've designed and printed for it. And um, I'll put a link to the outdoor filament test as well to make it easy for you to find. Um, again, it's a series. I think I had five videos in that series. So here the other day, I kind of went back to the drawing board. It's starting to get hot here again. I need to finish up my stuff with the Jeep because if you look at the... Um, if you look at the... Um, forecast here for next week, we're going to be here Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be in the mid-90s. And that's about the time when I don't do anything outside anymore. It'll be still be cool in the mornings for a while, but I'm not a morning person, you know. And then again, you know, by the time we hit June, July, it'll be 100 degrees at 5 a.m., so that won't be of much help. So I went back to the drawing board with my taillight lenses and my front parking light lenses. And what I did, I decided to stay with PETG. And what I did is I went back into Fusion. And, I, and, and all this, all my lenses and housings and all that are on Thingiverse. I'll put links to them below so you don't have to go digging back through the old videos if you don't want. Also, if you do a search for Chuck Bryant on Thingiverse, you'll find all my designs. Well, you won't find all of them. You'll find the ones I've put there, which is probably a dozen or more. And I know the lenses and housings are there. So I went in and I thickened up the, the flat portion, not the whole thing, but I thickened this center portion up by three millimeters and that gives me three millimeters of infill, and I put that honeycomb infill in it. Now, I don't know what version of Windows or what computers you guys are running, but when I upgraded my computer to Windows 11, 
Cura wouldn't run anymore. And then I found I have an AMD-based computer. Well, I take it back. Cura would run, but what happened was as soon as I tried to load a, a model into it, it had crashed back to the desktop. So I started using, I went back to using Prusa Slicer for a while, but I had an interesting, weird problem with Prusa Slicer. These particular lenses, you can see there's a raised rib around the outside where it sits against the gasket. So there was two bottom layers, they print like this, there was two bottom layers, there was the infill, and there was two top layers. It printed the first top layer fine, but the second top layer curled up and would not print. So I had to figure out how to go back to Cura. I either had to solve the problem in Prusa Slicer or go back to Cura. So I found that there was a, um, a cumulative update, an optional cumulative update for AMD-based computers in Windows 11. And now, you know what? This is not a video where I'm going to start bashing Windows. You know, we can all do that in other videos. You don't need to do that here, and I'm not going to. But um, there was an optional update for AMD computers, and I put that optional update in, and the problem with Cura went away. I also loaded in the Cura Master version, because the regular version of Cura does not have the honeycomb infill that I wanted, because I thought it would look really cool. So anyway... The same exact model printed in Cura without a problem. I don't know what the problem in Prusa Slicer was, why that second layer on top of the, the first layer, the first top layer printed fine. Second top layer would curl, and I did it three times. It threw away a lot of filament. Oh, by the way, this is the Overture P Transparent PETG. I really like it. It prints super nice, and yes, there'll be a link to that below. It'll be an Amazon affiliate link, of course. But um, these ended up printed really nice. Actually, Prusa Slicer printed a nicer bottom layer. Um, it just does. I don't know. I haven't really figured out the monotonic settings in Cura yet. In Prusa Slicer, you don't have to figure them out. You just click a button and they work. It printed a nicer looking um, bottom layer, but actually that X pattern across this one, I actually kind of like it So um, in the Cura one. So that's okay. So I have 10% infill. In these, I hope that's coming through. I have 10% infill with honeycomb in both of these. I'm really liking the way this looks. We're going to put these on. I'm hoping they're not going to color change too much, but we're going to find out here because it's not going to be much longer before it's 110 out here with UV, you know, that's off the chart. So, my other problem with these lights, I want to get as much done as I can. As I tried switching to LED, and of course I knew I was going to have problems switching to LED. When I put the backs in, they worked fine, but when I switched the fronts, then um, it stopped working correctly. Yeah, I know, I'm supposed to put in diodes and resistors and all that. I was told that if I put the proper electronic flasher in, it, the problems would go away. Well, I put in what I thought was the proper electronic flashers, and it still didn't work. So I did a little bit more research and I found out that these are actually the proper electronic flashers. So that's my goal for today. I am going to get my... And when I put the dashboard and everything back in, I went back to the incandescent bulbs just because I wanted to make sure everything was working. So right now there's incandescent bulbs in it. Everything works. I'm going to go back to the LEDs. I'm going to put the new taillights lenses on and the new parking light lenses on and I'm going to hope this works. If not, it's probably back to the drawing board because I'm not going to have the time before the hot weather now to do all the diodes and the and the resistors and all of that. And some of the, and I've read I've read and seen videos where there are problems with some of these cheapo LED bulbs and you know me guys, I'm a cheapo, so I bought the least expensive ones I could in that they light all the LEDs all the time. They're either on low or on high, and that causes them to feed back. I don't know. That's not something I've really thought about or researched. But let's try the flashers first. Let's go out. Let's get the lenses on. Let's get the flashers swapped, and let's just see if it works. So before I go any further, I think I ought to confirm that everything is still working because I did clean up all that tail, all that um, trailer wiring on the back that was held on, all put on with scotch locks. I hate scotch locks. So I got all that off of there and got it cleaned up. Oh, and I stuck one of the new ones on here so you could see the difference between the new one and how badly the ABS one has yellowed. Um, I might print something out of that. Oh, you know what? I've got the ones I printed in in um, 
Prusa slicer that failed. So we'll have one that sits inside so that we can see at the end of the summer how badly they've, they've discolored or changed appearance from the UV and the sun. So I think I, I would be wise to confirm that everything is still working after that trailer wiring cleanup. So I'm going to do that now. The lights that I am worried about right now, front and back brake lights, turn signals, headlights, parking lights, they're all working. So let's switch the flashers and let's put the LEDs in. Okay, interesting problem. The one on the right, the round ones, they're the ones I had in it. The EF32 electronic flashers. They do have a relay in them because you can hear them click on and off. Um, they work in the hazard position. The new ones I got are these square ones on the left. They don't work in the hazard position. And yeah, I swapped them so I made sure hazards just come on and stay on. So um doesn't appear to be a problem with the unit itself. They work fine in the turn signal position, but not in the hazard. So um, I'm not sure what to think here. For now, I'm going to put the square one in the turn signal. And I'm going to leave the... Um, the um, one here on the right, the round one, in for hazards. I may play around with that a bit if the LEDs don't work, but um, yeah, let's um, see what happens. I did go around quick and check it with the um, electronic ones and electronic flashers in, and they do work with the incandescent. So I checked that when I was done, and that's all good. So let's swap bulbs out. Okay, I now have the LEDs in front and back, and in backup light, and parking light, or um, license plate light. And um, now I can already see when I turn the turn signal on, not only are the um, both lights, both turn signal lights flashing, the actual instrument lights are flashing as well. And if we come back here, I have left turn signal flashing bright, and right turn signal flashing dim. Let's see what the fronts are doing. This is the problem with the um, the bulbs feeding back through. Well, fronts are working right. What do you know? Let's try the other side. I'm sure, it'll be the same thing. So the the um, flashers did not cure this. In fact, I think it's exactly the same. I'll check to see. Yeah, bright on one side and flashing dim on the off side. But, oh, the fronts are working right. That's pretty strange. I'm not sure what to make of that. I think I need a diode in these, in some of these lights. I'm going to try the um, original flasher and see what happens. Okay, original round flasher is back in. Let me make sure the hazards are off. Yeah, hazards are off. Same exact thing, except now you got the reassuring click. Yeah, same exact thing. Bright flash is bright on the side that you're... Um, your blinker is on and dim on the other side and yeah same exact thing so those flashers they did not change a thing for leds on this vehicle so they may be going back they're not expensive but i don't need so many sets of flashers so because i'm still not having any luck getting the front turn signals to flash correctly with the led bulbs in it I picked up a couple of these flashers. The previous ones just didn't work. I just think they were too cheap. I don't know. But these are supposedly the flasher to have. Sorry for my hands shaking. Caffeine and allergy medication, not a good mixture. These are EF32 RLNP. These will correct for incorrect polarity, reverse polarity, and they also have a ground wiring. I don't know how well you can see it up in there, but I did get the new two new flashers swapped in. And I got the um, those ground wires coming down to the bottom screw that mounts the fuse box. And those ground wires do have to be connected or these flashers will not work at all. So I guess that's got something to do with their polarity sensing. I thought it was just to make sure that the ground, that you had a good ground, but it's not. They don't do anything without the um, without those ground wires attached. Let's see if it fixed it. So I had to wait a bit for the sun to go down because it was so bright back here I couldn't see the lights at all. But let's give it a go now and um, see what it looks like on the inside. Inside's looking good. Let's try the emergency. Emergency's looking good. Let's look at it from the outside.
Okay, so I now have all LED front and rear lights. Now, I do not have the side markers working. I did not get the bulbs, LED bulbs for the side markers. And the original ones, I guess, are all burned out, so I'll have to get those next. I don't really see them as causing a problem, since all the existing ones are burned out, apparently. So, I mean, there might be a wiring problem, too. Who knows? But there it is. Those flashers cured my LED conversion issues and um seems to be working pretty good so it's probably going to be it this year for the jeep it was in the mid 90s today which is a wee bit too hot out for me but i'll put a link to the flashers and the other stuff below hope you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and we'll move on to other stuff bye for now